Good morning, everyone. Time for another member update. So I just got up checking the markets. Uh, Bitcoin looks like it is rolling over. Definitely making a test of new lows. New lows being 14,300, so uh, still very high. But you can see here, let's try to do some technicals maybe. The major trend line set up. So here's our major trend line. It's going to come in around 14,000. So expect probably a big break to the downside if we do get penetration of that trend line. Initial test is probably going to come in around here. Initial, initial attempt to make a bottom, I should say, will probably come in around here. So that's going to give us about 13,000 or so would be a potential entry point if you're looking to uh, come in and catch a bounce. One caveat being that there's there's going to come a day when we're going to go down and we aren't going to bounce. It doesn't mean that we're you know that the bull market is over, but there are ninety percent corrections I've pointed out before. We haven't had one of those in quite some time. We've had many in the past, but we haven't had one recently. So you have to be very careful about how you deploy your capital in these downtrends. I showed you yesterday scaling in in small increments, that's one way to play it. Uh, leave your big money for just end of the world type stuff, but still, it's easy to get trapped. So we're gonna come back to the markets. I wanted to just jump over to this article on Zero Hedge from Bill Blaine. This is posted last night. And this is just an example of textbook stupidity when it comes to Bitcoin. Uh, it, it really makes you wonder, in fact, I've been saying, I've sounded like a broken record for the last six to seven years about the things these people say. And I just wanted to say before I get into this, overall, if your critics have nothing to say but false information and misunderstandings, then you know you're right. If that's, all they, if that's all they can come up with, if after six or seven years, just ridiculous garbage is all that the critics can come up with, you know you're right. And it's been that way all through this entire bull market. So let's read this, and I'm going to dispute some of the nonsense in here. So the headline is, Bill Blaine, Bitcoin futures could be a cluster F of monumental proportions. Cryptocurrency or total carnage? Mike Novogratz doesn't see quick adoption of Bitcoin as a currency, preferring to think of it as digital gold. Perhaps this is one reason why. Amid its meteoric rise, Bitcoin is now 20 times more volatile than the U.S. dollar. Okay, I've talked about volatility before. If they were using a VIX index on Bitcoin, like they use on the stock market, then it wouldn't be volatile at all. <laughs> because... Uh, Every time the VIX uh, corrects, as the, as the stock market begins to resume its rise, it, it, the VIX goes back down to zero. In fact, the VIX has been bouncing around zero for a long time. So they don't even measure volatility correctly. A, a correct measure of volatility would be downside and upside uh, volatility, but they don't measure it that way. Is Bitcoin volatile? Yes. Uh, is it more volatile than the dollar? No question, but anything that's in a long-term bull market is going to be vol more volatile than something that's going sideways. That's true by definition, so that's a useless piece of information. As Mint Partners Bill Blaine exclaims, next week sees the improbable launch of Bitcoin futures. This looks like having the potential to be a cluster F of monumental proportions when it bursts. Every bank knows Bitcoin's extraordinary gains are a crowd delusion fueled by extraordinary promise of free wealth. Really. So let's just throw that out there. 
Everyone knows it. It's a delusion. No explanation given. Um, did a lot of people get into it because they thought it was going to be free wealth? No, actually a lot of people got into it because they thought that it was a neat idea. And they couldn't see any flaws in it. That's what I did. I had no idea how high the price was going to rise. I just knew that I had studied the white paper and I'd listened to the critics and they didn't have anything to say. <laughs> just like this guy. This guy is completely clueless. Yet many will be willing to trade and settle them for their clients, largely retail. Bitcoin has become the ultimate Klondike. Most folks don't have a clue what BTC and the associated blockchain ledger might be, but everyone knows what the price action has been. Okay, again, as I pointed out before, Bitcoin is the blockchain. The blockchain is Bitcoin. So this is a, an attempt they've been at for a long time to disassociate Bitcoin with its underlying blockchain, as if Bitcoin is any different than the blockchain. It's just stupid. Bitcoin is the blockchain. The blockchain is Bitcoin. They're inseparable. Where that price is going is clouded by a lack of clarity on the technological nuances, distorted by libertarian geek monetary gobbledygook, confused by a plethora of Me Too coin offerings, Speculators who see the chance of a quick buck and investors scared they're missing out. I spent most of this week learning more and more about the limitations of blockchain. Really? You've spent most of this week. You've had the last seven years and you've been studying it this week. That pretty much tells us how clueless you are from the get-go. It doesn't work. No, it, it's actually working. You see, all you got to do is look at this price and that tells you that it's worked. This chart right here, that says works. <laughs> that means that money has flowed into it from the fiat banking system. There's been no way to create more out of thin air. There's been no way to hack it. The price is proof of that. So it most certainly has worked. Uh, now, I've already discussed the cost of uh, transacting in Bitcoin and why that's so high and why there are going to be more and more alternatives. But uh, this is nonsense. Where that price is going is clouded by lack of clarity about technological nuances, etc. Scared they're missing out. I spent most of the week learning more and more about the limitations of blockchain. It doesn't work. It's an evolutionary dead end that nimbler cryptocurrencies will take the niche of, but I still don't understand why we need them at all. Okay. I said it from the very beginning that if something better comes along, there's no question that we're going to see a flow of capital out of Bitcoin into that. But we're not going to see a flow of capital out of cryptocurrencies back into fiat currencies. We're going to see bumps along the way. But right now, Bitcoin is essentially a black hole that's sucking in all money, including uh, you know, all the currencies of the world, not just the dollar. Right now, the madness is in Korea, as the Koreans try to get their money in a place where the government can't steal it, which is what's behind all of this, because the government wants to steal everyone's money. We know this. The governments are all broke, so they're out to steal everyone's money. So he doesn't see why we still need them. Well, we need them more than ever right now. If it's central banks you object to, let's have a private cryptocurrency based on gold or oil or something else tangible, but based on some computer babble, not for me. Now that's just, it's so, that's so dumb, it's beyond words. Okay. You can't have a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency based on something. The very act of backing something with something else creates counterparty risk. That's the entire reason that peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrencies were created, to avoid counterparty risk. So this guy, and this is, I go back and forth with this. Are these people really this dumb? Or are they paid to say these stupid statements? 
And why would Zero Hedge cover someone who's so obviously stupid, who doesn't understand anything about Bitcoin? It's, it's remarkable. It, it's amazing to me. On the other hand, the long-term possibilities that BTC exploits in terms of blockchain dis distributed ledgers are very real. Blockchain applications are going to utterly change finance. You mean Bitcoin is going to utterly change finance. You see that? They're doing it again. This is all they have. Now, this is what tells you that it's going to keep going up. Until somebody can actually come up with an argument, and it's implied in here that it's a Ponzi scheme. So I wanted to address that. Um, now, this is a video I did in the Office Series for Bitcoin called Bitcoin Office Series Part 3, Bitcoin Ponzi uh, Debunked. Okay, this is July 3rd, 2011. That's a long time ago. It only has 4,000 views. And I went into the definition of a Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme is not, not just, you know, you can't just throw terms around and just pretend like they mean whatever you want them to mean. Terms have meaning. And, you know, something either fits the definition or it doesn't. Now, I argued in this video and I still argue that Bitcoin is not a Ponzi scheme. So you can see here in the outline, you can watch the video again, but you can see here in the summary, I give the definition of a Ponzi scheme. And this is the definition. Ponzi scheme is an investment scam. Okay. Now that's important because from the beginning, when someone creates a Ponzi scheme, they have the intent to defraud people. In other words, they make a investment scheme that appears to be a legitimate investment but with the intent of defrauding people they never really intend to invest in anything and this is really important because you have to look at the term investment so an investment is something that gives you returns on your money it's not it, it could be a bond um, but it's primarily stocks or ownership interest in companies that make something. That's traditionally what an investment is. Now, one would ask, is gold an investment? No. Under that traditional definition, gold is not an investment because gold doesn't have returns. It has capital gains, but it doesn't pay a dividend. Bitcoin is similar to gold. Uh, it's just something that people invest in because they like the properties of it or they think that it's going to go up in value and they're going to make capital gains. So by the first definition that it's a planned scam that uses investments, Bitcoin is neither of those. Now the second part is that it fraudulently promises uh, abnormal returns. Well Bitcoin doesn't promise anything. And uh, again, back to the scam thing. If you think about the person who came up with Bitcoin, they came up with Bitcoin to actually be something that would protect you from Ponzi schemes, which is government fiat currencies. Now, they're not, they're not Ponzi schemes in the sense that they pay a return, but they're a scam in the sense that the people who create them have unlimited ability to counterfeit them. Uh, so Bitcoin was created not as a scam, but as a counter to scams. And back to fraudulently promises. Does Bitcoin promise anything? It doesn't promise anything. There are no promises. So it fails there. Abnormal returns on an investment. Again, people may expect abnormal capital gains, but it's not an investment. So it fails that definition uses new monies to pay off old investors. Well, no, there are no invest, there's no investment, so there's no investors, and there's no revenue stream to pay people off. A Ponzi scheme takes money that's coming in from new investors, and it pays it out to old investors as dividends. So they fraudulently pretend that investment capital 
is earnings on an existing business when it's not because there really are no existing businesses. If you look at Bernie Madoff, for example, what people believe they were investing in, it wasn't real. They didn't have an invest. There were no investments. There was nothing paying dividends. So again, yes, Bitcoin has early adopters profiting from new money coming in, but that's true of any bull market in anything. Uh, if you're talking about gold, uh, if you talk about the gold bull market in, in 1979, 1980, in the late 70s, where gold ran from 50 bucks to 850 bucks, were there a lot of people who bought gold around 50 and 100, who sold it to new people around 600 and 700? Yes, absolutely, there were. Does that make it uh, a Ponzi scheme? Nope. Every bull market is like that must grow exponentially or it collapses. Now that's one of the absolute keys of a Ponzi scheme is that they can't keep going. And the reason why they can't keep going is because they have to grow faster and faster to pay off newer investor or old investors with new investor money and they need a larger pool of new investors to generate that money to pay off the old investors and then, of course, down the road, they're going to need even larger amounts of new investors to pay off those larger amounts of uh, relatively new investors. So it, it's like a giant funnel. It has to grow exponentially. Bitcoin is nothing like that. It doesn't have to grow at all. In fact, uh, one of the biggest criticisms of Bitcoin is its volatility. So that's even in this article. Uh, well... If Bitcoin just went up to a price of $10,000 or went down, actually I would say went down, or let's say Bitcoin goes up to a price of $100,000 and then just stays there and doesn't do anything. Well, that performs its function perfectly well, assuming that they solve the transaction times. Or let's say that Bitcoin crashes down to $1,000 and then it just stays at $1,000 for years. Well, that serves the purpose perfectly well. The transaction fees would drop significantly and people would be able to transact in Bitcoin. It doesn't have to grow. It's growing because people are seeing the value in it. So again, these tests, it fails every single test of what the definition is required to be a Ponzi scheme. It, but does that matter to these people like Bill Blade? It doesn't matter. Uh, Mint partners. You know, what does this guy do for a living? He takes people's money and pretends to know something more than they do so he can make money for them, which most of these guys end up not doing so. So again, um, I don't know the explanation for these morons, if they are morons. Maybe they're paid agents. I just don't know. But I do know that the information and the arguments that they use is utter garbage and they have nothing. They have absolutely nothing. And if they have absolutely nothing, then Bitcoin's just going to continue going up until they have something. And I don't know what that something is going to be. Maybe it's just going to be Bitcoin becomes too expensive to transact in and then the other cryptos grow. Now let's talk about these other cryptos because that's where money is bleeding into. The other, uh, the, the people who have made money on Bitcoin, they are taking that money and they're investing in other cryptos. I don't believe that money is flowing back into the fiat money system. Now, the latest breakout we have here, and I missed this one, is Litecoin. And Litecoin was stuck for a long time under 100 bucks, and then it just, it just made this run to 150. So I, I was wrong on this one. I didn't think there was that much potential on it, but there were plenty of potential gains for short-term traders yesterday. Now, one that I did play yesterday was this XEM. It had everything I liked. I actually got in and out of it three times and made a profit three different times. Uh, it was a classic textbook pennant run-up formation. So let's try to pull it up on the chart here and see if we can get that. So you can see we had this breakout. This is actually where I got in. 
and uh, then we had a pullback added to it. Um, I think actually I took some profit on this one and add on this pullback. Then we had this perfect pennant breakout here. So I sold up in here and then I waited for the correction and added and then I think I sold again. Now it didn't make new highs. So normally when you get that situation where you know you get this burst, uh, consolidate, burst, consolidate, burst, and the, this one fails, then you're going to see some sideways action. And if, if you're short term, then that plays kind of dead. Now this is definitely one to keep an eye on because when that much volume comes in, it's, uh, it's possible it's going to run some more. So I still have just a little bit left, gives me a position, and I'm watching it to see if it can make new highs in this formation. If it can, I'll probably play it again. But uh, it's time to look for new plays. Uh, I try to keep mainly flat every day, and that's just that's the only thing you can do in these markets. So, I, let's see, I don't even know what I have. I have some steam dollars here. Uh, now it looks like since yesterday, this announcement has come in here. Steam dollars has changed. SVD is currently under maintenance or experiencing wallet network issues. Deposits and withdrawals will remain disabled until a solution is found, which may require an update from the SVD team. So this is the standard boilerplate thing that Poloniex puts out there when, uh, the, a coin is locked up. You want to watch a coin when it locks up because you can get some phenomenal gains in a locked up coin. If you think about it, uh, the, they can't deposit any coins on there. So arbitrage is not a possibility. These coins right here, 157,795, and then the ones that aren't, you know, there's, there's ones that people have in wallets on here that aren't listed for sale, but those two put together, that's going to be all the coins. So if there's a buying frenzy on this coin, then you can get a significant price spike because there's no way to get more coins on the exchange. And anytime a, a new coin starts to run, there's a lot of you know, miners and people with wallets and stuff like that that will take the opportunity to send those coins over to the exchange to sell them and, and generate some cash. Well, in this case, they're not going to be able to. So you want to keep an eye on it, but you have to be very careful because this is also a sign sometimes when the coin can be delisted. You can see here, uh, November 21st, they dis delisted SJCX note and Nautilus. I never would have guessed that Nautilus would have been delisted, but it was. So you have to be very careful. Uh, so I'm going to keep an eye on that one. Uh, I have a tiny amount, so uh, I'm not too concerned. I have 0.018. Stellar, I have 0.037, so uh, that's a little bit more concerning to me. It looks like it is kind of trying to make a run again here. Uh, this is the chart in BTC. I like to check the technicals on both. The chart on BTC is pretty bullish. It's got a lot of overhead up here it needs to get through, but it's it's making a healthy run. It's good to be in it and have a position. Let's check it over on the USDT because Stellar trades in both places. And it's kind of more of a potential breakout pattern here in USDT. So this one's gonna be one to keep an eye on today. If it gets enough volume and gets a test in here, we could see a move in Stellar like we saw in Zem yesterday. Definitely going to keep an eye on that one. Not selling it. Holding with what I have. Uh, and then Zem. So I think I have 50. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm otherwise flat. Now I actually did sell my position in IOTA. I know I said I wasn't going to, but something about the chart just made me not like it partly because it was rolling over. Um, I'm going to be looking for big drops to add, small amounts. But, uh, you know, I bought it and sold it, bought it and sold it. Uh, it's been very good to me, doubled my money with it. And uh, I'm planning on accumulating some long term, but I'm going to be looking for real bargains to do so. 
So that's where we're at. Um, let me go through the coins here and see what's on the plate for today while Stellar is really perking up here. Yeah, so I'm probably going to be straight trading Stellar all morning. Um, so on the USDT, you can see it's kind of a bullish scenario. You've got these stacks here, at, let's say 14, 15, pretty big stacks, and you see these little uh, amounts chipping away. The spread is kind of wide for big money, so it's still pretty risky. Normally, when there's super serious accumulation, you're going to see these stacks rise up to here, and you're going to see the spread tighten up uh, pretty tight. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, what else do we have here? Checking volume. Litecoin actually comes in at the top. That's going to be one to keep an eye on. If Litecoin can get through 150, it will definitely be worth a breakout play. Ethereum has been very, very sick for a very, very long time. Now it's Looks like it's starting to actually make some moves against Bitcoin. Let's check Ethereum over in USDT, 474. So Ethereum looks to be forming up kind of a pennant, a very, very long pennant. Ethereum might be one to keep an eye on. So yeah, it's if, if you look at Ethereum in USDT, you know, I said it has been sick for a long time. Well, not in USDT, it's just been kind of going sideways. But if you look at it in Bitcoin, it's been in a long bear market. Now this formation that you see here, this is a formation that a lot of coins are making right now. This dip down bottom and back up. That's what Zen did yesterday. I almost didn't play Zen because of this, but I ended up doing it when I saw the strength. Now this is a similar sort of formation that Ethereum is making, but it's behind. You can see that. So it looks like there could be some fireworks here. Uh, again, we already looked at Zem. Bitcoin Cash, that's going to come in fourth in volume. Same sort of rounding up bottom formation. Stellar, we already looked at. Ripple, which I said repeatedly, I don't like on a fundamental basis. Same thing. You see that? Same sort of formation. So money's coming out of Bitcoin, coming into these alts. It could be a very exciting day. Monero, that uh, doesn't show me anything. Dash, same one. Same dip down. Ethereum Classic, uh, kind of a larger one, but same sort of thing. Next, which is one I've been in quite a bit recently, is taking some time to consolidate these gains so it may be a while with next it's already had significant run-ups uh, Einsteinium which is just kind of a tiny coin had a spectacular run-up and crash and now they've got it listed with wallet issues so that's another one to keep an eye on so I'm going to get to trading now and uh, like I said I'm going to I'm doing some shopping, want to get a quieter Twitch type box and uh, maybe get some live trading going uh, with live interactions with people and uh, moving forward I'm trying to just uh, do a video each morning, cover the latest news and cover the latest trading that I'm doing and keep you up to date. We'll talk to you next time.